Welcome to Developer Skill Sprints. My name is Kerry Jensen, and this is Controlling Dynamic Field Creation in T Datasets. T fields are objects that represent the columns of a T datasets result set. These classes are used to read and write data as well as provide access to the underlying columns metadata. T fields are defined using one of two mechanisms. When a T field is defined at design time, it is known as a persistent field. Under the right conditions, it is possible for a T dataset to create T fields for its result set columns at runtime. These fields are referred to as dynamic fields. In the past, the existence of any persistent field, other than aggregate persistent fields, prevented the creation of dynamic fields. As of XE6, the T dataset fields options property permits persistent and dynamic fields to coexist, allowing you to create calculated fields and other persistent fields while still benefiting from the automatic creation of dynamic fields. This feature is particularly important if you need to have one or more calculated fields yet some of the columns of a T dataset's result set cannot be known until runtime. The T dataset class and its field options property were introduced to the runtime library with Rad Studio XE6. This is a cross-platform portion of the uh, of the libraries and is available for all versions of Rad Studio and app method. This being a sprint, let's not waste any time and get right to the demonstration. I'm using Rad Studio XE6 with the Delphi personality, and I've begun this process by creating a FireMonkey form. And to this, I'm going to add a bind navigator, a string grid, a FireDAC connection, a FireDAC query, and a FireDAC GUI weight cursor. Let's do a little bit of organization here. Get our grid up and uh, placed. I'm now going to configure the connection using the FireDAC connection editor and I'm going to select the interbase driver. The database I'm going to use today is found in the installation directory for this product. And I'm using the DB Demos interbase database. I'm going to set the username to sysdba. The password is the highly secret master key password and I'm going to point to the local database or the local uh, local machine for the server. Let's go ahead and test the connection and we are successful with that. Our FireDAC query is already uh, connected to the database and I'll use the query editor to enter a simple A simple uh, SQL statement. Okay, uh, that reminds me since I just saw that prompt for a password, I'm going to turn off the login prompt property. Okay, uh, what we're going to look at now is persistent versus dynamic fields. We have a query here and let me go ahead and activate it since I have no persistent fields. My query is going to generate uh, the dynamic fields that represent the, the results or the various columns of the customer database. Let me take a moment to visually bind this query result to the string grid so that we can see the results. Okay. So each of the columns uh, were created by the FireDAC query when it was made active. Let's go ahead now and uh, close it. And now I'm going to bring up the fields editor. The fields editor is the uh, the the uh, tool you use to create your persistent fields. Now the first thing I'm going to do is create a type of persistent field that does not 
short circuit the creation of dynamic fields. This is a uh, aggregate field. Uh, not all T data sets support aggregate fields, but uh, the FireDAC data sets and client data set also support aggregate fields. So I'll um, create a, f uh, a field called year count. Uh, and I'm not going to go to the trouble of, of actually configuring this. Um, in fact, I come down here and just say it's an aggregate field, and that's all I need to do. And notice that this uh, appears down in a little special pane on the fields editor. Uh, other persistent fields would appear up at the top portion of this. Let me uh, come back and activate the query again. And you'll see that our our dynamic fields were created. So the presence of a of a aggregate field does not prevent the creation of dynamic fields. However, if I add any other kind of field, for instance, let's add a field called invoice year, and this will be a uh, calculated field, and we'll say that's a string four characters in length. Now, if we uh, activate this query, we'll see that all we're going to get are the persistent fields. Invoice here, right there, and um, this is the way it's been uh, since uh, the uh, T data set was originally introduced in the uh, original release of, of Delphi. So, what happened in XE6 is that uh, the T data set introduced a, a protected property called field options, and field options allow you to configure the T data set. Uh, to either uh, suppress the di uh, creation of dynamic fields like it did with the previous versions, or to create dynamic fields under specific conditions, which I'll get into in, in some detail in a moment here. Uh, this is particularly useful if we want to have calculated fields in our data set, but we don't know the uh, entire scope of our the fields that we're going to return. For instance, we may have a query that sometimes returns five columns and sometimes returns eight columns, and and it just depends on what the user is doing and our our code is controlling that that query. But we do know that there is a column in there that we're going to perform a calculation on. So we want to create a calculated field, but we still need the dynamic creation of the dynamic fields so that we have all of the all of the columns in the actual query that get, gets executed. And this this configuration, as I've been saying, is uh, performed through the field options property. The field options property is an object that has three properties of itself. The, um, the principal property is auto create mode, and the default value is AC exclusive. AC exclusive exhibits the same behavior that data sets have uh, exhibited in the past, which is uh, the presence of a non aggregate persistent field suppresses the creation of dynamic fields. What this does for you is it ensures that there's backwards compatibility. In other words, the introduction of this property is not going to break your existing code. Uh, any applications that you have that are um, uh, that were designed uh, prior to XE6 are going to continue to work the way that they always have. There are, however, two additional settings. Combine always means that regardless of the types of persistent fields that you've defined, you will always get the dynamic fields generated as well. Let's uh, take and use this setting, and now we're going to activate our query. And we have invoice year, our calculated field, as well as all our other fields. The second setting is combine computed. Now under this configuration, the presence of calculated fields will not suppress the generation of dynamic fields. However, if you have any other type of field, it will suppress. For instance, I can let's make sure we're okay, we're not active, and I'm going to come in and add a field called company. And this is going to be a data field. Now, uh, with the uh, our field options set to uh, combine computed, we're actually going to have the suppression of the dynamic field creation. However, if we go back 
and change this to combine always, we'll see that we will get the generation of our dynamic fields. The position mode property of field options defines where the dynamic fields will be placed in the uh, in the orientation of the of, of the the columns. When when set to PO last, the default, the dynamic fields will be created after the last persistent field. Alternatively, in fact, let, let me get rid of this here and give us a little more room. Uh, alternatively, if we set this to PO first, then the dynamic fields appear prior to the other fields. And if we were able to scroll over here, we'd see that our dynamic field appears uh, over there. The last setting for position uh, mode is PO field number or field no. Uh, when you are using this setting, the position of the a field will be based on its index. So here is the company field. It, its index is uh, set to zero. This is set to one. Let me come in here and uh, first of all s set this back to uh, PO first. Well, actually, let's go PO last and activate the query and we'll see that the company field is actually in the first position. Now if I set index to 1, the company field information is now being displayed in this column. Uh, there is a problem here. This is XE6 and this is a, a clearly a, a painting issue that it hasn't updated the uh, the, the uh, titles, but that's not, that's not the point. Um, if you were using a DB grid with the VCL, it works perfectly. Uh, this is something that uh, I'll have to uh, report. Nonetheless, that is the purpose of that, that final set, uh, setting of... Uh, well, and you, you actually notice that the f f we got field number here. Let's go ahead and deactivate and activate again. And set company is uh, to zero. And you'll see the information has moved over here. And we still have the painting problem. But that's beside the point. Okay. Let's now take a look at uh, the final property of field options, which is update persistent. Now you may have noticed this company field I, I had here, that's actually the name of the underlying field in the database. And what I did is I created a persistent data field. And when the FireDAC query opened up, it saw that that field is the correct name and rather than creating the dynamic field, it used the information about this persistent field I had created. And this allows me to do things like set the size property or the required, uh, the required property of the uh, field uh, to the values that, um, that, that I want and then have that information override the, uh, what would have been assigned to a dynamically created field. And that's what this this last uh, update persistent uh, property of field options uh, pertains to. Specifically, when update persistent is set to false, any values you set for your data persistent fields are retained once the data set is open. If you set it, uh, if you set the update persistent to true, then metadata retrieved from the underlying database will override three properties of the corresponding T field specifically, and these include size, precision, and required. The last thing I want to consider as far as this property goes is how is it that you as a developer can determine how the fields were created within your data set. There's really two questions here. Uh, one is, um, are all your data set fields created dynamically? Are they all persistent? Or is there a con combination of dynamic and persistent fields? And you can get that information from the T data set's life cycle property. The life cycle property of a T data set is a set property, and it can contain one or two flags. When LC automatic is a flag in that set, that means that there were some dynamically created fields. And when LC persistent is in the set, it means there are some persistent fields present. Uh, if it's only 
LC automatic, they're all dynamic. If it's only LC persistent, they're all persistent fields. If you have both flags, then your data set is composed of a combination of persistent and dynamic fields. The individual T fields have also uh, also have a life cycle property, and that life cycle property will be either LC automatic or LC persistent. Specifically, for any given field, you can tell if it was a dynamically created field or if it was a field that was defined using a persistent field. Early in this presentation, I mentioned that the uh, field options property was introduced in XE6 and was available in all versions of app method. Um, it was introduced also specifically as a protected property. And in XE6, um, there's only two sets of data sets that actually have elevated that property from protected, which cannot be touched at either runtime or design time, uh, to published, which is uh, what these properties are that appear in the object inspector. So with our FireDAC query, we certainly can see the field options property. But like I said, this is um, XE6, and if I add a client data set and look for its field options property, it's not there. And this is true with a number of uh, other uh, T data sets. I mentioned that FireDAC, uh, uh, their T data sets support field options uh, directly through a published property. The other one is Internet Express. It also supports uh, uh, field options. However, it is possible for you to access these, these properties. And uh, this is one way. I have created a, a descendant of T client data set and I've called it tclient dataset fo for field options and what I've done here is a, a, a neat little trick that uh, that you can use which is to elevate a property from protected to published. This is called raising the visibility of a property. Now I've created this particular unit to have a register procedure and in my implementation of the register procedure I'm registering a component with the tool palette. If I take this unit and I add it to a design time package and I install that design time package into the IDE, I will now have two types of client data sets and the client data set FO actually will expose the field options property and let me configure it. This is particularly important to note that I, I need to have uh, I need to actually install this component so that um, it is uh, accessible at design time from the tool palette. It is specifically from design time that field options apply. You really, it's not, you're really not going to manipulate field options at runtime in code. It is something you're going to configure at design time since you're specifically creating persistent fields. Creating persistent fields is quite specifically a uh, a, de a, a design time operation. Uh, later versions of, of RAD Studio and App Method will probably expose field options in more data sets. You should, uh, if you have a data set though that, uh, for, that does not expose field options, uh, it has inherited it from uh, the uh, T data set class, however, so you can just use this technique right here to raise the visibility of the field options property in that data set. For more information about the field options property and other related properties, you can refer to the doc wiki uh, for RAD Studio. There's also the doc wiki for app method. Uh, you will find that information in the T dataset class. Uh, also, you can download this project I've created, and I actually have two versions of the project. project. There is a FireMonkey version, and there is a Visual Component Library, or VCL version. Uh, and you can download uh, those uh, sample projects along with this slideshow uh, from www.jensendatasystems.com slash fieldoptions.zip. Thank you for joining me in this developer skill sprints. I'm now looking forward to our question and answer period. But before we get to that, let me mention that you can contact me uh, using cjensen at jensendatasystems.com. Uh, if you're interested in our development, consulting, and training services for Delphi, you can uh, see more information at jensendatasystems.com. 
Also, if you're a Delphi developer, you may be interested in Delphi Developer Days, uh, where I'm a principal speaker with my uh, co-speaker, uh, Bob Swart, and we do a annual tour of three to six cities in North America and Europe, and you can find more information about that at DelphiDeveloperDays.com. Uh, I also invite you to follow my blog at kerryjensen.blogspot.com and follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Jensen. Any plans to allow summary fields or lookup fields on clone cursor data set? Well, th that's a good question, and I think I understand it. Um, the, the problem is you cannot add uh, fields, and I believe that what he's saying with summary fields or aggregate fields, um, or lookup fields, you can't add those to a data set that's already created. A clone cursor is actually a cursor that's attaching to an active uh, data store for an existing client data set. And so that's why, that's why you can't add that at that time. Now I will mention that in the Delphi Developer Days 2012, Marco Cantu showed a really clever technique uh, for adding uh, persistent fields to a client data set while it was being created. So in the process of actually calling create data set, these aggregate fields were added, but it, it wasn't something that could really be done after the data set was added. Uh, I can't remember the details of the example. I believe he was using uh, uh, generic methods, uh, which was one of the several points that he was making in his tip. Um, nonetheless, this, this is not something that I uh, I think certainly not in a client data set. I don't think you're going to find that. Um, Go ahead. Since there's no there's no other question here, there was one thing that I really wanted to get into that presentation, but I didn't. I did want to keep to the 20 minute limit. Um, it's so easy on some of these recordings to go way way over. Uh, but uh, one thing I didn't point out is when you do create those persistent fields the actual T field declarations appear in the form or the modules uh, class declaration and they appear as published uh, published members uh, just as if you had placed a button on a form the button becomes a published member of that form or if you uh, create persistent fields for a data mo for a data set on a data module those persistent fields actually become classes declared in the published section of that data module um, so just if you know most I think most people who have worked with T data sets understand that and know that, but uh, it, it does make it uh, much more easy to refer to those fields at runtime because they have a, a name and they have a reference in the an actual member of that module class that points directly to that T field. That's one advantage. Uh, the other thing I didn't show is if you have a data set that points to an underlying database uh, and you open that data set, uh, at design time and right click and say add all fields, you're creating persistent data fields for every single one of those fields. Or you could select add and field and select one or more, but not all of those fields. In some cases, people use the suppression of dynamic fields, which you would get with the AC exclusive setting of auto create mode. Uh, some people want that. They don't want particular fields to be surfaced in the data set. But those fields that are not surfaced in the data set are actually, even though they may be in the results set, they are inaccessible. They are completely inaccessible. That's why this addition of field options is, is nice. It allows you to create calculated fields and still allow um, other dynamic fields to be created. And in those cases, you can actually then just set the visible property of the individual T fields defaults if you want to suppress their display. Or you could create and, and, uh, T columns for the for a for instance a DB grid and just hook up the columns that you want and, and not display other columns of the result set, whether they're dynamic or persistent. And everything that you showed, you can use uh, C plus plus builder for, right? That's correct. I just don't have a C++ builder example, but what I really showed uh, wasn't didn't require any code. Uh, I do refer to on this final slide of where you can download the code sample, and or I, I actually on the previous slide, and those code samples are in Delphi, uh, and there is a little bit of code on the on create, and what it does is it wires up the uh, the FD connection to. Uh, the current version of the download sample. So in XE6 or XE7, it'll uh, hook up correctly to the right connection. 
but it does that at runtime. And this, the creation of persistent fields is specifically a design time operation. Uh, but the, basically I built that fire monkey uh, form live there and if you are a C++ builder or developer you just follow the same steps and then of course the code that you're adding and the structure of your uh, of your source files are all going to be C++ builder source files. Okay so Dante uh, put a question in and then updated it. Uh, if I'm not wrong on the old version of Delphi if we create a dynamic field on table A and do a link to another table B to show a field from B and A, then we cannot insert or edit on the table. Uh, on the new version, can we edit and insert the table if we've done a dynamic field? Okay, this is this is interesting. Um, do an old version and create a dynamic field on A and do a link to another table B. First of all, I don't think that anything has changed, and the situation that you're describing, there's there's a lot of corner cases to it. For instance, with FireDAC data sets, you actually can have linked fields in your results, or you could have a, a heterogeneous query in your result set, and as long as it's really, really simple, or I, sh I should say straightforward, and there's a one-to-one -one, um, one -one correspondence between the fields in the result set record and the corresponding fields in the two or more tables from which those fields were drawn, you actually can have the data be edited and you can post the data to it. Uh, also, there, one, of the, um, uh, one of the fields, let's see, no, that's, I was going to do something else. We have, we, have, um, we have the ability to make some fields read only. And so really, a, a data field is the only field that you're really going to write to. Um, and that field has to be a field in the, um, in the underlying result set. So in my presentation here, um, I had created that company field. And since there was a corresponding field called company in the underlying result set, I was able to, I'm actually able to edit that field. Now your question refers to um, a result set that has linked tables. Um, and that's where the, the answer related to FireDAC comes in. Uh, FireDAC, uh, under some situations, does permit you to do that uh, and edit those fields. Uh, you may have to go down to the individual T fields and make it inactive, or with a FireDAC uh, query, for instance, you might have to go into the, uh, one of the options, I think it's the um, request option, and actually turn off check for read only, but then you'll be able to edit that field. And I know with a, uh, with a client data set, you could actually create persistent fields that map to a linked result, uh, a, a query that is um, a heterogeneous query that's pulled through a data set provider, and then actually edit that, uh, that persistent field and have the data written back down to the underlying database. But you would have to take control of the update, either by using the data set providers on update record event handler, or just manually filtering the client data set on edited records and then using your knowledge of the underlying data structure to uh, post your data back to the underlying data sets. Uh, so uh, it really depends. Uh, but there's, as far as I know, nothing is different now except for the fact that you can configure uh, to have dynamic fields created when there are already persistent calculated and other data fields um, and internal calc fields in the uh, in the uh, data set prior to the activation of that data set. Okay, and Winston asks, should we be worried about exposing private properties as you did in the F? Uh, Winston, hey, how's it going, Winston? It's been a long time. Um, we're not exposing private properties. That was a protected property. You can't, in fact, well, using the enhanced RTTI, you can get down and read private properties and even strictly private properties. But uh, the way that the T data set was designed was that the fields options property is uh, specifically intended to be uh, introduced at the individual T data set uh, descendant level and therefore they implemented it as a protected field in T-Dataset and then the developers who uh, worked with the FireDAC, they specifically raised the, the visibility from protected to published, which is precisely what uh, protected fields are all about. 
protected fields are almost universally there uh, to be exposed in descendants at a later time, but out of a descendant by descendant basis. For instance, in teeth control, the color property is protected, uh, and it's not raised to, uh, for instance, in the T-edit class, it's not raised to publish until the, the actual T-edit class definition. I also have your question on uh, when does Midas Live need to be included in a project and let me uh, answer that question at the same time as I post my answer to it, which is uh, Midas Live is a, uh, a unit that is required, uh, well conditionally required, if you include a client data set in your project. If you're not using client data sets and data set providers, Midas Live, you don't, you don't need it at all. Um, if you do have a client data set uh, and or uh, data set provider in your project, then you typically place the Midas Live unit in the project source file. Uh, the, the bottom line is that Midas Live must be part of a unit that is that is um, initialized uh, prior to activating any kind of client data set. Uh, if you are using client data sets or data and or data set providers and you don't include Midas Live unit in your code, you need to deploy the Midas.dll library somewhere on the library search path of your machine. Uh, that is a DLL and of course that, that uh, won't work on some of the supported platforms by Red Studio and App Method, such as iOS or, or an Android uh, Android machine. Kerry, again, thank you very much. Well, uh, David, thank you very much for the opportunity, and I look forward to participating in another developer skill sprint in the future.